to glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who lived in his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus. Welcome to this teaching. This is the second part of the second preaching in the series, the Church Reformation series. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you knowing and believing you because you gave us faith you gave us christ you gave us your word we have hope even under this condition so we are here before you with the word before us we are asking that you nourish our minds you build our lives so that we can face this life Please forgive us our trespasses. In Christ we pray. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to read with you Psalm 44, 1 to 3, Deuteronomy 4, 5 to 8, 2 Samuel 20, verse 23 to 26, first Chronicles 29, verse 29 to 30, and second Chronicles 9, verse 29 to 31. We'll read these scriptural portions as we move, because what is important here is to show the history of the church from the oral transmission of that history. Secondly, the symbolical transmission of that history. Then, the beginning of writing and the beginning of um, recording of information. So now let's start with the oral tradition by reading Psalm 44 verse 1 to 3. Psalm 44 1 to 3. We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers, have told us what you did in their days, in the days long ago. With your hand, you drove out the nations and planted our fathers. You crushed the people and made our fathers flourish. It was not by our swords that we that they won the land, nor did they, their arms bring them victory. It was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face, for you loved them. I'll just repeat verse 1. When we have had 
with our ears, oh God, our fathers have told us what you did in their days, in the days long ago. The importance of word of mouth, the importance of the symbols in church reformation history. God's people had the word of mouth. They heard with their ears. They've heard what happened in the past, what God did when he created the heaven and earth. They have heard the fall of men into sin. They have heard the flood. They have heard the Tower of Babel. They have heard the scattering of one nation of Noah into different nations. They have heard the call of Abram. They have heard the call of Isaac. They have heard the call of Jacob, the call, the ministry of Joseph, the ministry of Moses, who led them out of slavery, out of Egypt, delivered them towards the promised land, through the desert, the exodus, the Red Sea passage. They have heard the pillar of fire during the night to guide them. They have heard about the cloud of comfort during the day. They have heard of manna from heaven. They have heard of water from the rock. They have heard God's hand who led them in victories, winning against Amalekites, winning against Amorites. They have had all these victories. So you can see that the oral tradition, hearing from the past generation, transmit, transmission of this word was important. Of course, it is clear that Noah gave information to his son. His son gave information to their sons. Shem gave information to Terah. Terah gave information to Abram. Abram to Jacob. Je uh, Abram to Isaac. Isaac to Jacob. Jacob to Joseph. And Joseph to Moses. And throughout ages, the stories were added up with their own context, with their own stories. So that's why the, the whole story become great and great to see how God work with people. With these stories, with this history, with this theology, we start to understand God's work. Firstly, who God is and also what he said and what he says. Thirdly, what he did, what he does and what he will do. Become very clear and clear as the story gets uh, deeper and wider. Of course, unfortunately, when the direction is wrong, the story gets short left, diverted. Imagine the same story of the creation of heaven and earth, of the fall, of the flood, of Noah. Imagine how in Sumeria it was or transmitted Acadia, Babylon, Egypt, 
it was distorted. As time goes by, the line of the story, the direction of the story, instead of honoring God, the story started to twist, to have twists. If you compare the history of the Sumerian, the history of Akkadian, the history of the Babylon, the history of Egyptians, they have the same account, but it is distorted because the religious direction is no longer the same. They blame God. They think God, uh, there are many gods struggling and these gods, they are there for power. They are there to be blamed. And they magnify men. Sin is regarded as caused by God, not by men. That is how the Sumerian, Akkadian, Babylonian, Egyptians view things. Imagine the view of gods among the Egyptians. How they view afterlife. How they turn the tombs into a very expensive enterprise. Burying all the golds, articles, many good things with a view that the body will rise. And when they rise, especially the kings, and the important people, when they rise, they will need the gold. They will need this and that. So you can see that there is a, a religious idea, but twisted and taking another direction. That is the first thing that we, we, we can say about the word of mouth, the transmission of history and it is clear that is how history um, was formulated recorded but it must be very clear concerning history in this that indeed the word of mouth is very important in transmitting historical information culture and theology from one generation to another but remember People were talking every day. People had dreams. People had visions. People shared those dreams, those visions. They taught others. They sang. And they pass on all those historical facts through songs, through uh, talking, through uh, culture and theology. That is why the written records do not show or they do not show all that was. History is more than the written account of it. That must be very clear. That the written record limits what actually happened. Yes, the writer writes with an aim, with a purpose, with an end goal. Highlight some important dates, events, and leave out many things. So oral history is basic in this regard. It's concrete. It's daily. It's a daily transmission of culture, history, and theology. This is very, very important. But coming to the second point, when now, after the oral, there came a symbolical or 
oral and symbolical went hand in glove. What is symbolical um, transmission of history? Through symbols, through visual uh, communication, history, culture, theology was transmitted. In reality, daily, people do something, not only talk, but they do something. They have art, they have culture, they have sculpture, they have drawings, paintings. They have forms of worship. They have dresses, they have shelters, decoration, colors place of worship, medicine. They have place, positions, they have homes, and certain types of buildings, pottery, cups. They have music, songs, poems, preaching, teachings, which were done on daily basis and especially on special occasions. What am I doing here? I just want to show how history is broad and deep. Yes, written one, limit a lot of things of culture, of narrative. So history is more than written one. There is oral and there is visual, symbolical ones. And as time goes by, you will realize that the development of people in terms of oral tradition, symbolical tradition, they started to write. And their writing went hand in hand with the development of reading and writing. This leads us to the second point. The second point is about the development of writing. And it brings us to the second scriptural portion that we will read. Deuteronomy um, 4 verse 5. To eight, which read thus Deuteronomy 4 verse 5 to 8 see I have taught you decrees and laws as the Lord my God commanded me so that you may follow them in the land you are entering to take possession of it observe them carefully for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations who will hear about all these decrees and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. What other nations is so great as to what to have their gods near them? The way the Lord, God, is near us whenever we pray to him. And what other nations is so great as to have such righteous decrees and laws as this body of law? I am sitting before you today. The greatness of nation of Israel among other nations is put clear here. That the nation of Israel, yes, came later. There were Sumerians. There were Akkadians. There were Babylonians. 
there were Egyptians who had development of writings, coiniform, the wedged shaped form of writing, the V-shaped writing of coiniform, the use of V-shaped words by uh, sharpened wood and iron on the wet clay, which is sun dried or fire dried to be tablets. And some of them were found by archaeology. Even when you go to uh, Egypt, you find hieroglyphic writing. This hieroglyphic writings is the writing where the pen and the ink were used on the papyrus reeds, where the writings are in the walls of the palace of the kings, even in their tombs, monuments, public areas, and they are dis dis displayed for reading's sake, for record's sake. Later on, the alphabets were introduced. Phoenicians, they introduced the alphabets. 1200 BC and the Greeks and the Romans improved those alphabets. So all this discovery were very, very important, even in the times of Moses. Moses developed the writing. He was fortunate because he learned the writings from Egypt and Egyptian uh, civilization together with Mesopotamian one were advanced indeed in the times of Moses. So he was fortunate to learn from other nations, to learn how to write and read. And it also benefited the Israelites. You will see in his writings that God will always say, tell, talk, address Joshua, address the nation. Though the nation, by his time, were not well versed with the reading and writing, but Moses was there to develop the writing. And now, I want to make it very clear that during his time, already there were some developments regarding writing, especially laws. You will see that the laws of Hammurabi, 282 laws, inscribed and grafted onto the black stone of two meter high, seven feet high. There were 282 laws of Hammurabi, the king of Babylon, the king of Amorites. When you compare those laws, you will see that there are some similarities with Biblical laws. In the introduction of this 282 uh, Amrabi codes, there is an aim which is pointed very clear in the introduction, saying, I quote, to cause justice to prevail in the land, to destroy the wicked and the evil, that the strong might not oppress the weak. That was 
the aim and the objective of the law to cause justice to prevail in the land, to destroy the wicked and the evil, that the strong might not oppress the weak. Of course, the implementation uh, is another matter. But here, the issue is, God revealed all these to all nations, but in particular, to the Israelites, he revealed himself clearly and directly to other nations through creation, through the law uh, engrafted in the heart. They were able to respond, other nations able to respond and gave back through laws, through politics, through socio-economic and cultural matters. They revealed that indeed God exists, though the direction is wrong when they don't believe in the same God. The same applies with the law. When the law favors the rich and uh, the elites, the law is turned, is twisted. And that's why in Deuteronomy 4, it is made clear that observe them carefully. They were written by God's hand for the nation as, the, as a blessing so that they can be a blessing to other nations. For these laws will show your wisdom and understanding to other nations. Other nations will say, surely this nation, the Israelites, are the great nation, wise nation, understanding people, given the laws which they observe and obey that is the second thing which i wanted to put it clear but to to also um, in the second place to add on this second point there are also songs you remember songs songs are important not only as symbols they are important carriers, transmitters of culture. Remember, in the Old Testament, 25% is songs and or poems. 25% of the Old Testament writing is poem or songs. Remember Adam's songs, Genesis 2, from 22 onwards. Remember Miriam's song in Exodus 15, verse 20 and 21. Remember Moses' psalm, Psalm 90, attributed to Moses. You can talk about David's songs, 73, attributed only to David. So, Psalm, Proverbs, Song of Solomon, Lamentation, there are poetry in nature, there are songs, um, Ecclesiastes, half of it is poetry. All this show that people were singers, dancers, in festival, in feast, in their holidays. So there were many songs. These 150 songs are not all. There were many other songs. Because people respond, react to God's revelation in many ways. And through singing, they portray their heart. They reflect their heart. It can be portrayal of their daily suffering. 
pouring their heart to God as song of praise, worship. Secondly, as thanksgiving, praises to the Lord, pouring their heart in the third place to confess their sins. In the fourth place, to express their doubt, their fear, their complaints, their lamentation. Fifthly, to ask help in terms of suffering, in terms of persecution, in terms when they have enemies. So you will see that other songs are written there on top, superscription to show the historical context. Others are called pilgrim song, song of ascent when they are going to Jerusalem. All these give us a glimpse of what was happening on the ground. There were many songs, not only 150, but there were many songs written in different times in their history. You can even get a clip, a, a glimpse of it when we read um, Kings. In Kings chapter 1, I mean Kings chapter 4, 1st Kings chapter 4, verse 29, 234. God gave Solomon wisdom and very great insight and a breath of understanding as measureless as the sand on the sea shore. Solomon's wisdom was greater than the wisdom of all the men of the East, meaning Mesopotamia, and greater than all the wisdom of Egypt. He was wiser than any other man, including Etam, the Ezraite, wiser than Haman, Kalko, and Dada, and Dada, the son of Mahol, and his fame spread to all the surrounding nations. He sp spoke 3,000 proverbs and his songs numbered 1,005. But we don't have those songs. Those songs of 1,005 are lost. We only have song of songs and few proverbs attributed to Solomon. So you can see that comparing the Israelites by then between Moses, David, and Solomon, you see the wisdom that God gave the people. And this is the thing that is very important in church Reformation history, the oral, the symbol, the written history is important in transmitting the facts, historical facts, historical happenings, God's work, who God is, what God says, what God did, is doing and what he intended to do. So next time, we are going to finalize this part because it is very important to get the whole idea, the whole picture concerning transmission of historical fact from one generation to another.